Hi everyone, today I thought I would show you how I'm going to colour this little sort of leafy bush on this page. And as you can see, I've already done a fair bit of this page. Um, this is from Enchanted Forest by Johanna Basford. Now, just to let you know with the background, this is pastel. I just put a light layer of pastel on first and I've coloured this in a pencil just to sort of show the hill. Now I wanted to do the background first because it would determine what colour I did all the leaves. So this bush of leaves we're going to be doing, we may not do all of it, it depends how, um, how it goes. I'll just zoom in for you. There we go. Now What's tricky, I realise, about this bush for people is the design. So we've got different leaves of different types. What do we do? Well, I'll show you what I'm going to do and then you can decide if it's what you would like to do. Now, on this page, I'm using a lot of similarly toned greens and we're not going to move away from that. This is the olive green yellowish. This is uh, Faber Castell Polychromos. These are the pencils I've used for most of the rest of the page. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. Now this is the same green that I've used for this stalk here of this tree. So I'm not going to do a really thick layer. I just want it to look darker at the bottom here. So I'm just going to put in a lightish layer to start with on every one of these little stems, perhaps is the word. So I'm just gonna start them with this because I want them dark. I'm just trying to work out what's going on here. That's the stem going up there. And this one, oops, coming across here, sorry. Now the reason that I'm using this quite dark color is I need it to look, I want it to stand out from these bits at the bottom here. I, I realise that a lot of people may have coloured those in as stones. I may have been tempted to myself, but I decided that I would do them as if they were little plants or little balls of moss or something like that. I just felt that was what, I just, I have there's so many stones already in the page for one thing but it just seemed to work for me in my head, I don't know. So we've done that bit. Now, we're actually going to ignore all of the drawing on here, the decoration within the petals. We're going to leave that to just sit and do its own thing. Next, I'm going to use the Chromium Green Opaque. I'm going to go back over the top of what we've coloured already so it gets quite dark down here and then I'm going to bring it up the leaf here and start to fade it out. And then a darker bit in there and up here. And gently start, Ooh, I'm turning over the corner of my book with my hand. This page has taken me so long. In the week I tend to get maybe an hour to colour or less each day. And I don't always um, colour this. So it's been taking me a long, long time. But I want to go slowly because I'm really enjoying it. And I want it to look nice. Sometimes I go a bit faster and I don't mind. But this one... Just taking easy and enjoying each little bit. So nice. I have already decided in my head what my next project is. So that, uh, that can sometimes make me rush. But um, I'm really determined not to. And I have secretly started on my next project. Well, it's something I've been working on for ages that I just want to get finished. So um, it doesn't feel quite so urgent to get this one finished. Yeah, what my other project is, because you're probably going, I wonder what she's on about. Um, I've talked about it before, is my um, daily planner. Um, I'll show you, um, like these pages. I've got one from, I think it's 2017, and I want to get it finished. I've got about a month left. So, uh, and those pages are small, they don't take long. 
and I don't always do backgrounds. Um, I'm looking at these other bits of leaves and I'm thinking here, I've got quite a lot of this leaf so I'm going to put a fair bit of this on here. So yes, I want to get all of those planner pages finished and um, then I can do a flip through for you as well which will be fun and show you them all. I'm not going to do too much here because this is more about being shadow because it's against the other leaf rather than it being the colour of the leaf. And here the same here. Now although I've done pastel on this page I haven't put fixative on it and I'm leaning all over it, I'm colouring on top of it. Now fixative can make it quite, I've got a workable fixative that I use. Earth green yellowish. Um, I've got a, as I say, I've got a workable fixative that I use, but um, it does make the paper feel a bit scratchy and textured, and so it makes it more difficult to colour on. So um, I didn't really want to spray it, as well as the fact that it really smells. You have to do it outside, and it's cold. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, a tickle. It's some cold outside at the moment, so I didn't fancy doing that. You can see how I'm graduating the colour up the leaf. It's going to look similar-ish to these. I see those, but those have got a... Um, they've got um, some Prisma colours in them. And Chantreuse I used in that, which is a lovely colour. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um... Yeah, I haven't got my Prismas down here. I do tend to mix my brands when I do pictures. And when I do videos, I don't. Because I think it's... Um, if you're searching for a video or you've got a particular brand, you might just want to watch videos on that brand of pencil. I think it can be confusing as well. I don't have a full set of Prisma colours anyway. And um, so I can't really do videos, I can't do videos just with those, I don't have enough. I've just got the greens because I always want lots of greens because um, Johanna always gives us lots of lovely green things to colour and uh, so uh, I've got green Prismas but not many and there are lots of people out there that do videos using Prisma colours so I don't think there's a need for it. You can look at somebody else's, there's some great ones but I'm trying to do I'm trying to use pencils that perhaps people haven't used so much to help you. I know um, people have asked me to do um, more on polychromos or more on um, Ergosoft, which is what I tend to focus on. I am about to get some new pencils. Oh, I've done some light fast, don't light fast, but I'm not, I'm not that good at using them really. I don't think now I have had them for about six seven months but I haven't used them loads um because they're with every brand there's a technique and you have to get used to using them I've used been using Ergosofts for hmm, seven or eight years and Polychromos for probably six or seven years so I know what I'm doing or well, I like to think I do whereas ones that I haven't had so long it takes me a while to get used to them but the new set I've ordered are um, Arteza. Um, Johanna Bassford was using them in one of her videos and they looked really lovely. And uh, I just, she said they were nice and soft and smushy like Prisma, but you could get them sharper. And that really appealed to me. And I had a quick look and they were, I, I say cheap, they weren't cheap, cheap, you know, dirt cheap, but they were on offer I found a 10% discount code they had free delivery and I just got tempted and so I ordered there's a tube of trying to think 48 I think it was and um, they were 17 pounds I want to say something like that which seems pretty good deal to me if I consider this pencil here, which is a Caran d'Ache Luminance pencil, which I brought down, I'm not using it today, um, cost me £3, £4, I can't 
can't remember now. And we're moving into the May Green. This is a new one. You'll notice the writing on it is in a completely different font to this one. And I have some people saying, are they fake? A plus. They've got that bits the same, but they've got a barcode printed on them. Um, they're not fakes. I have checked. Um, if you go onto Faber Castell's official website, they are selling these. So they're definitely not fake. It's just they've changed them. And actually, it's really good. Um, firstly, with a barcode on, it means the shop doesn't have to put a label on it. So you don't have a horrible sticky bit that you have to remove when you buy an open stock pencil, which is really nasty. Um, also, um, they... Um, um, yeah, and I don't mind that the font's changed. It doesn't worry me. It means they don't match the other ones in my tin, but, you know, it lets me see what's new and what's old, I suppose. I don't know the advantage in that really though but uh, I think it's okay now you can see I'm just roughly going over this now to blend in the colours with this lighter one taking it almost to the tip got one more colour to go and I've got to think about these um, bits that are turned over so I haven't done loads of that I'm going to do a light layer of this on, on these turned over parts now when I have a turned over bit of a leaf in a picture, I tend to do it lighter in colour. The reason for that is because when I look at a leaf that's turned over, if I'm out and about and I'm observing leaves, um, they tend to be lighter and slightly greyish maybe. This is the cadmium lemon yellow. I feel this is a little bit greenish and it adds a nice bright tone and I'm going to use this to pull all the colour together and go right over the whole thing I'm pressing quite hard and I think it lifts it adds, adds some glow this isn't going to be our last bit though and I'm going to put it over the here as well because I want these to stand out from the background that's why I did the background first partly as well as the fact that I just happened to have, it, have my pastels out so it was a good opportunity to do them I was doing a different picture with pastels. So uh, I'm having great fun. These are my favourite shades of green, which is why I've chosen to stick to this sort of limited palette of these colours. I wanted this whole picture to look sort of earthy and uh, so the ground you can see we've got the stones but I kept all these oranges and this is supposed to look like dirt I don't know how well it works really but um, I'm going to I've left it for now and I'm going to see how it works when I've finished and whether I think it it's okay and we've drawn this in as a hill because there's a sort of line across there so I felt it needed something so you can hear I'm pressing quite hard this book's pretty robust this isn't a very modern copy of Enchanted Forest the paper is different these days and the books are even better but I've always liked this paper. Perhaps I'm not um, fussy enough or, I don't know, experienced enough to see the difference. Now what I want to do now is just to add a bit more contrast between the different um, leaves. I'm just going to go over that because we didn't do a second layer there. Right, so I want um, a sort of dark colour to show me to just outline these bits. I'm using, um, this is the chrome oxide green but I'm going to use my baby one because I need to use him up. And what I'm going to do is go along the edge where it overlaps 
and the idea is that that should help it to stand out and look more three-dimensional and we're going to do that every place where the leaves overlap so then if they're as coloured in a similar colour they still stand out from each other. Now it can be good to go over the top of the black line that's there that we're following as well as just above it. I hope you can see that the leaves on this side look more three-dimensional than these because of that just that bit of shadow sorry I'm not talking concentrating there and then down here as well, um, here, um, this bit there, and there. I think that's it. I'm just looking carefully. Yeah, and now we're at the point where we can think is there anywhere that looks like it needs to be a bit darker? And um, I'm thinking definitely here. I want this to look darker. So I'm just adding another layer. Sorry, this is the. Um, olive green yellowish. I'm just going to make that dark and then fade it in a bit and I can go in with my um, oops, my chromium green opaque to just help to blend it in a bit and I'm going to do a bit more in here as well so I'm going to grab that olive green yellowish again now you can keep building and layering as much as you like here with colour and uh, it's a lot of fun to keep building up layers of colour. And I'm going to grab that one again, the um, chromium green opaque, to just blend that back in. I think I'm going to also pay a bit of attention up here to this one. In fact, I've missed out. I didn't do any yellow on this one, I don't think. And here. And then the um, chromium green opaque up here. And here. grab this um, yellow. In fact, I think I have done it. It just hasn't blended in well. I'm going to take the May Green as well on this one. Just try and blend that together a bit more. It's better. I'm happy with that. Okay. I think I'm going to make that do. So there we go. That's how you can cope with a sort of bushy leaves with all sorts of different patterns on. As you see, I ignored the pattern and just went my own way. So that's one way that you can approach it. So I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.